Hi, I'm Deneen, and I'm here with Chris in the Napa Auto Care Garage. We're going to present a quick review of the five basic checks to perform whenever you replace a catalytic converter. Covering these five checks can save you a lot of time and money by dramatically reducing the chances of a repeat emissions control failure. Chris is going to get us started with a quick reminder about the many factors that can affect converter efficiency and service life. Thanks, Deneen. It's important to remember that catalytic converters do not fail on their own. They are damaged by other issues, such as an improperly tuned or misfiring engine. So you need to make sure the engine is operating correctly before installing a new converter. As one example, a dramatically discolored converter shell, typically bronze or blue, like this one, can indicate a melted catalyst substrate. This clearly points to an upstream problem, either within the engine or ignition system, and is normally the result of misfiring cylinders. So let's turn to our five basic checks to perform whenever you replace a converter. Our first check is to retrieve all powertrain control module trouble codes and perform any and all required repair procedures for those codes. It's also important to determine if there are any PCM reflash updates and or technical service bulletins available for the vehicle. Manufacturers can periodically correct software issues that can affect emissions performance and you'll want to be sure these updates are made to the PCM before installing the new converter. Check number two is to make sure there are no leaks in the exhaust system. In order for a converter to operate efficiently, it must be able to store and eventually release all of the excess oxygen in the exhaust stream. The oxygen content in exhaust gases is typically less than one half of one percent, while the air we breathe contains about 21 percent oxygen. So it's easy to see how even a small pinhole leak could pull enough extra oxygen into the exhaust stream to trigger a PL420 code. You can check for leaks by using a smoke machine or performing a basic visual inspection. Another option is to pressurize the exhaust system with compressed air and then spray a solution of soapy water on all the welds and joints. Bubbles will indicate areas of concern. Although all leaks should be addressed, be especially suspicious of any leak upstream of or within 18 inches downstream of the converter. Check three is to make sure the engine is in fuel control. An air-fuel mixture that's either too rich or too lean can cause a variety of problems, including increased emissions and converter damage. There are two ways to determine whether an engine is in fuel control. The first and best is to use a four or five gas analyzer. If you don't have one, you can often detect emissions issues by checking the rear O2 sensor with a scan tool or high impedance digital VOM meter. When the engine is idling or running at steady RPMs, the rear O2 sensor reading should be above 450 millivolts. Steady readings of 650 to 850 millivolts are common when an engine is well tuned and the resulting P gases will allow the converter to operate at high efficiency. If the rear O2 sensor is either switching rapidly or below 450 millivolts, there's either an engine management issue or a mechanical problem such as an exhaust leak. As Chris just mentioned, the best approach is to use a four or five gas analyzer. If you have one, you'll want to see a lambda reading as close to one as possible, or certainly not outside a range of 0.995 and 1.005 at idle. You'll also want to see a hydrocarbon reading of between 0 and 35 parts per million. Lambda is simply a very precise way to measure an engine's air-fuel ratio. The theoretical perfect ratio for gasoline engines is 14.7 parts air to one part fuel, and a lambda of one equals that ratio. The acceptable lambda range of 0.995 and 1.005 equals an air-fuel ratio of between 14.62 and 14.77 to 1. When the lambda reading is outside this range, the engine might appear to be operating properly but could in fact be generating feed gases that reduce converter efficiency and will ultimately trigger a P0420 or P0430 code. It is important to remember that these codes are defined as converter efficiency codes, not converter needs to be replaced codes. So you need to determine what is causing a converter efficiency to drop off and correct that problem. Check four is to determine the mechanical condition of the engine and to identify any issues that could lead to converter contamination. Start by performing a cooling system pressure test. An internal cooling system leak can introduce coolant into the combustion chamber and eventually into the exhaust stream where it can damage the converter substrate. When conducting the pressure test, the system should hold the specified cap pressure for at least 15 minutes. The overall mechanical condition of the engine can be determined through a volumetric efficiency test, which is pretty simple to calculate on most modern vehicles by using mass airflow sensor readings at wide open throttle. If you determine that the converter efficiency code is due to substrate damage, misfiring cylinders, or other engine-related problems, correct the root causes first, before installing a new converter. 
Then, if you do need a new converter, be sure to use a high-quality NAPA converter. And that brings us to check five, which is make sure you have the right converter for the application. To do this, simply reference the vehicle's make, model, year, and engine size. Then double check the vehicle emission control information label located in the engine compartment. The label will indicate if the vehicle is federal or CARB 50 state emissions certified. The emission certification status is particularly important if you're in a state that requires that aftermarket replacement converters be CARB compliant on certain vehicles. If a CARB compliant unit is required, make sure to locate the proper engine family number or EFN or group number in the NAPA CALCAT catalog. You can also use the fast, easy NAPA e-catalog at NAPAonline.com. So let's do a quick recap, Chris, of our five steps. <clears throat> First, correct all other PCM codes. Next, inspect for and correct any exhaust leaks. Then, check fuel control, remembering that a Lambda of 1 is your target. Then, check for and correct causes of converter contamination. And make sure you are installing the correct replacement converter for the application. Remember, the NAP Emission Control Team is always here to help you get the job done right the first time, every time. Thanks for watching.